us today, Deborah decided to tell her side of the story. And if you know of any people who say I've heard them in my career, I'd like to hear it because I simply don't believe that's the case. That was Deborah Norville this morning after she finished her shift on the Today Show, the job that brought her to national fame. This is the Deborah Norville America Loves, the morning star of the 90s, the woman who brings sunshine and smiles over your coffee and cornflakes, the woman who kissed her predecessor goodbye on the Today Show. But this man knows a different Deborah Norville. The master user. She comes across as being little Miss Sweetie Pie. And, you know, but boy, she's ambitious to beyond belief. Nothing, nothing matters to her except to go to the top. Nothing else matters. Meet Harmon Wages, a man who knew Deborah Norville when she was known as Debbie. A man who loved her at a time her talent was still developing. And a man whose fall from grace coincided with Deborah's rise to stardom. Everybody respected her, too. So she had good numbers. So it was just like the quarterback and the cheerleader. <laughs> and now Harmon Wages is talking about his old girlfriend. He says he's tired of reading articles that make him look like the biggest mistake in Deborah Norville's life. And just think, for a time, it seemed Harmon Wages was the one whose star would shine across America. Harmon says he had a side he hid from Deborah his dark secret that would lead to the end of the romance and the beginning of his fall from grace. Harmon was a cocaine user. Wasn't addicted. I just did it socially. Uh, I was never the, the hook. But what I do now, actually, because of that, I'm a better example out of Harmon. He's the biggest name in the pie. So they indict me on 17 counts. I'm acquitted of 16. One misdemeanor, obstruction of justice, possession. Harmon says Lawman wanted to use him to get to bigger users among the Atlanta media. He says he refused to squeal. They said, tell us anything, drugs, marijuana, gambling, anything. Tell us, and you have immunity. You're free. And I wouldn't do it. And these are the very same people that won't even take my call. Harmon says one phone call he made was a call for help to Deborah. She said, I have a date. I have nothing to say to you. You're on your own. And I said, what about our six years together? She said, that was convenience, honey. I said, Debbie, I need you right now. Well, you've ruined your career. You're not ruining mine. And I said, I need you. Tough. Hangs up. Wages went on trial and watched the girl he once loved testify for the prosecution. Well, what made me mad was she wouldn't talk to my lawyer. Usually the witness will interview with both lawyers. Deborah told the courtroom that she was not aware of Harmon's drug use. Harmon was convicted and served 81 days and at Atlanta prison. Harmon spent the time since trying to get his life back together. He got married and divorced. He's done some TV and radio work. These days, he's dividing his time between the sites of his former glory, Atlanta and Florida. I try not to be bitter because that's a waste of energy, but I'm disappointed and I'm hurt. As for Deborah Norville, Harmon watches her on TV like everyone else for sunshine and smiles over his coffee and cornflakes. Jane Pauley's better. She's sweeter. Deborah Norville feels as though she's been a good person, too. I became a Christian when I was 15. We'll have the full interview with Deborah Norville coming up next. You turned against him on the witness stand. How do you respond to that? I... I can't respond to that. Um, I was subpoenaed by the federal government to appear. And I was on the witness stand approximately six minutes, and I think you know what was said. You've talked that you did not know that he was using cocaine. Um, yet, it seems strange that you wouldn't notice it, being a reporter. He must have, did he hide it well? You're a woman. You've trusted people, I suspect. Um, when you have a relationship with someone, you put your trust in that person, and you believe what that person tells you. And I believe what he told me. Was he very important to your career? I worked hard to get where I am. I think all of us in this business uh, get the successes and failures that we have through our own efforts. What about Harmon's claim that Deborah dumped him when he needed her most, telling him she didn't want her career ruined? That's not true. Didn't happen. Okay. He says that you tried to get back together with him after he got out of jail. <laughs> um... Harmon called me when he got out of jail. That's the last contact I've had. I have never made any effort to contact him. 
and have it to this day. Harmon said that you were in the pump house or the pump room in Chicago in which you were said you were so ambitious to go to the day show and you said, I give that midget six months once I get to sunrise. I'm paraphrasing what he said. Did you call Jane Pauley a midget? I have not spoken to Harmon Wages in many, many years. The conversation that he alleges took place never happened. I don't speak that way. And one of the joys of being promoted to the Today program was working with Jane Pauley. Uh, it was, and she was a friend and still is a friend. I never said that. Are you as ambitious and as ruthless as he says you are? Well, I don't know what he says. All I know is I work hard at my job. Um, I've never coveted anyone else's position. And uh, when the Today Show job was, was offered to me, I was delighted at the opportunity to work with Jane and Brian on a daily basis. Well, he was saying that you were um, ambitious beyond belief and that there was nothing that was going to stop Deborah Norville. She was going to make it to the top. Um, nobody would stand in her way. Um, let's see. And he said, she's hurt a lot of people to get to the top. I well, I, that's simply not true. I've, I've, I've never stepped on any toes. I mean, I, um, I became a Christian when I was 15, and I always thought if I wrote a book about my career, it would be something like, I got there by playing fair. That's just the way I operate. And if you... And if you know of any people who say I've hurt them in my career, I'd like to hear it because I simply don't believe that's the case. I've played fair, always have, and you can ask anybody in these offices here what kind of person I am. Um, it saddens me to see me portrayed uh, as someone I'm not because that's not me. And why does she think Harmon is saying these things about her now? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask Harmon that. Um, I feel very badly for Harmon. I know that his future and his marriage haven't worked out as he'd hoped that they would. And, um, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. And I wish him only the best. I'm saddened that, that he's had some of the down spots that he's had in his life. And I'm sure he is too. And I know his mother has probably cried a million tears over these things. Harmon was a part of my life many years ago, and I have, I have left it at that. 